Welcome into another edition of the OSU Roundup. I'm Jessica Mori, joined by Oklahoma State softball head coach Kenny Gajewski. Coach, it is regional time. We have reached the postseason. You guys are hosting a regional this weekend. How exciting was it when y'all heard your name called as the fifth overall seed? Well, it's always exciting. I think as a program, we knew we, we were in, but until your name's called, it's just you just don't know. There's so much unknown, and to see our name pop up at number five in a national seed and the ability to host both rounds if we can play well in the first round is a big deal and uh, just another cool moment in our program's time. And, you know, this year was so weird with COVID and everything. Mm -hmm. There was a chance that you might not be able to host even though you guys had such a successful regular season. So was it even just that much more special? Yeah, because there was still this unknown. I think in a normal year with no COVID, we're a lock to be a host, and I think we were, we were a lock, you know, to be a top eight seed. Uh, but with everything going on, you, you just don't know. And, and so there was that, that little bit of a, uh, uh, a thing out there going, hey, we should host, but you just don't know. So um, we're just excited and, and grateful and, and uh, you know, thankful that our administration made it happen. And, and uh, it's here. And you guys finished as runners up in the Big 12 tournament in Oklahoma City. And then you took a little trip to Broken Bow with the girls. Tell me about that. Well, we just felt like it would be a very good thing for them. You know, our time is winding down for every team. And the season is going to come to an end at some point. The journey ends. Um, that's the beauty of our game. It's the beauty of sports. You get these journeys, these new journeys. Well, these girls wanted to maximize time and they asked us if we could do something and we thought this would be a great opportunity. Went down to Broke Kimbo, got a little R&R, &R, had a little practice, got a lot of time together, a lot of nice meals, a lot of hanging out, playing games, taking naps, getting in the pool, just being us. And, and uh, it was really cool to see. They had a blast and, and I think it'll pay off you know, as the season goes on here. That sounds like a great time, and it should be a great time this weekend as you guys get set to host the regional Boston University, Campbell, and Mississippi State coming to Stillwater. What do you know about those teams? They're winners. Uh, that's, what, that's what I know. These, anybody that's in this tournament now, they're, they've won their conference or they're in a great conference and they've finished well. Um, and so you better play your best softball this time of year because this is when it really uh, – this is when the – when all the best teams really played their very best. And so you better play your very best. I know that they're all well coached. I know there's a lot of good players that are gonna be running through here. And uh, I just can't wait to watch our team play. That's the focus is, is our standard, play to our standard. Uh, don't worry about who's in the other dugout, eat what, whether we're in the third base or the first base side, just do your deal and I think we'll be good. You guys have been here before. You made it all the way to the Women's College World Series back in 2019. Had an extremely successful season so far this year. How does that experience a few years ago help you guys moving forward this season? Well, it's just experience. That's exactly what she just said. I mean, anytime you can log experience, log postseason games. Uh, we've already logged three this year. So you look at some of my, my seniors that I've got, um, that we've got, I shouldn't say I, that we've got in our our program, they played in postseason every year. So you just start really logging these big games, playing in front of great crowds. When the game, the games are here, and if you lose, your season is over. Uh, it's a big deal, and it's it really goes a long way. The teams that have this type of experience have a big advantage in this. It doesn't guarantee you wins. It just guarantees that, that you know what to expect. And speaking of what to expect, what do you think we should expect from the crowd out there at Cowgirl Stadium this weekend? Bedlam. <laughs> I think that's what you're going to see. <laughs> it's going to be nuts. It's going to be chaos. It's going to be a blast. They'll be as, as loud and as full as, as the NCAA will allow. And, and um, I'm just excited. I'm grateful that they have an opportunity again to see this team play, to be a part of us, because they, they truly are a part of us. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Coach Gajewski. The Cowgirls will be in action this weekend, Friday, Saturday, and hopefully Sunday as they get set to host a regional here in Stillwater. We'll be right back after the break with head coach Josh Holliday. All the ways you love to play. Academy Sports and Outdoors makes it easier than ever to get what you need and have fun out there. Get free shipping on your favorite brands at academy.com or get free curbside or in store pickup at your Academy store. This one is intercepted. Yeah! Towel. There was a mess. I wiped up 
Game day is a go. There's a Bud Light there. Welcome back. I'm now joined by Cowboy Baseball head coach Josh Holiday. And like earlier, we talked about a big weekend in softball. It's a big weekend for Cowboy Baseball as well. Thank you so much for joining me, coach. All right. Thursday night, George W. Bush coming to town to throw out the first pitch at O'Brate. How exciting is that for not only you and this university, but for the whole baseball program? Well, you know, this was something that uh, a year ago, <clears throat> a lot of time and, and obviously uh, excitement, anticipation, work went into what was supposed to be the first game ever at Obrate Stadium against TCU. Obviously, uh, COVID-19 hit and the season was uh, shut down like just about everything else in the world. And uh, that moment in time didn't occur. Uh, but here we are uh, a little bit over a year later with a chance to kind of reenact what should be an amazing experience to have uh, President Bush here to really give our, our fans, uh, our players, our university, our community a night that we'll all remember uh, with capacity back to, to full. We hope that we can have uh, a near capacity crowd to really celebrate Obrate Stadium, uh, celebrate Mr. Obrate and his family and, and President Bush to be here to throw out the first pitch and really just bring, I think, some, uh, some attention, some energy, some celebration to what has been uh, an awesome experience that is moving into our new home this year. So. Uh, in addition to that, we're expecting, uh, I think, a, a flyover and uh, some post-game fireworks. So uh, it should be a fun night, um, obviously something we'll never forget. And, and it's a night that just kind of puts into perspective the pride, the work that's gone into Obrate Stadium, the, the, the joy that seeing that place uh, full of fans brings to Mr. Obrate and his family, uh, that he would invite some of his closest friends to, to come and celebrate it with him. So it's a night of celebration, and then after that, obviously, we, uh, we need to play well. You guys are hosting New Orleans, a non-conference series to wrap up the end of the regular season. How do you keep the guys focused on this series, knowing that the Big 12 tournament is right around the corner and knowing that, you know, the first game of the series, you got a, a big spectacle with the former president coming? Well, as I told the players, they, they, uh, they know that every time we get a chance to play, it's a, it's a unique opportunity because you only get so many chances to compete. Um, and whether it's a conference game or a non-conference game, it's an opportunity to compete, which one, every time we do that, we want to play our best. And, and two, uh, winning games matters and, and uh, playing well matters. And obviously these games uh, in our home ballpark give us a chance to continue to build our team, uh, build uh, momentum and, and, and play well and get on a roll and take that role into a postseason uh, where all you got to do is get a ticket to the big dance. If you do that, anything's possible. We saw that. Uh, whenever it was five years ago, we went to the College World Series. We went on the road and played great baseball and got hot. And next thing you know, we looked up, we were in Omaha. So uh, you just have to get in position. And once you get in position, uh, execute your very best baseball. So we're focused on playing our best. Uh, and that's all I've asked the kids to do. You guys wrapped up the Big 12 regular season with a series win over the Baylor Bears at O'Brate. How important was that to get a series win to end Big 12 regular season play? Very important. Um, some great games. To walk off win on Friday night, uh, very much a back and forth game, lots of battles, lots of blows. I mean, they were, Baylor I thought was very good. You know, their pitching statistics coming in were very good. Their offensive statistics coming in were very good. And the Friday, Saturday game showed both of that. Um, the Friday game with a big walk off, Saturday Justin Campbell was uh, elite once again in his ability to go out there and pitch in dominant fashion. Uh, and then you mentioned the long Sunday game. So important to play the games. Uh, the five-hour rain delay was tough. It made for a very long day. But after the rain delay came off, we had a chance to play. And in that particular game, we just simply didn't play well enough. And Baylor fought hard. They wanted that one game. And uh, even though we had sweep on our mind, we just didn't quite push uh, enough runs across to get back in that one. So they proved to be as good as I thought they were going to be going in. Uh, very good pitching, very good offense, but I think we were up to the task. And uh, we put a, a courageous game together on Friday and then simply a dominant pitching performance on Saturday to get two out of three. So I like the way our kids handled last week. And now with New Orleans coming in, what can fans expect from New Orleans? They might not be as familiar with them as they would be with a Big 12 foe, but what can they expect from New Orleans? Well, a, a team that uh, this year has played four-game weekend series, so it's obviously a, a tough team and they've played a lot of games. 
Uh, they're coached by a former first team All-American at LSU. So obviously he'll have them prepared to compete and not be afraid of anything they may encounter. Uh, and a team that has some really good pitching statistics. So we'll have to be ready to go with a couple of really good pitchers going against us. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining me, Coach Holiday. You can catch the Cowboys in action this weekend against New Orleans starting Thursday at 6 o'clock. You can watch that game on ESPN+. We'll be right back with Robin Ventura and EJ Fister. They're grilling up some good food. You won't want to miss it. We'll be right back. First step at mercy.net slash cowboys ortho. There are a great many things that can be found on the road. A giant blue whale in central Oklahoma. Musicians in search of that perfect melody. You'll even discover the center of the universe. You'll find stories of lives led, challenges met, and men who raise pigeons. They're all out there waiting to be discovered. All you have to do is follow the road. Phillips 66. Live to the full. Hi, I'm Robin Ventura. Hi, I'm EJ Fister. He's a college baseball Hall of Famer. And he is a 1988 individual champion for cowboy golf. And we are grilling. Started with a couple families wanted tailgate at Oklahoma State Games from Edmond, and then some of the golfers started to come, and the uh, a lot of the alumni started to come, and they're like, "We need to crank this up a notch." And so he likes tri-tip, so he's like, "I'll get a grill made for the tri-tip side," and I said, "Well, we'll get a grill made for the rib side." So. I stay on my side, he stays on his side. We don't cross over. Anybody that likes the ribs, you don't get to come back. This ain't gonna happen again for you. This is a tri-tip sandwich, uh, typically made in Santa Maria, California, where I grew up. This is kind of one of our staples. and. Uh, it's made with salsa, garlic bread, salsa. I had come back for a football game and uh, made it when EJ was around and they kind of forced me into making it all the time. So now I have to make it all the time. As well as I have to make it for Josh too because he seems to like it. This is uh, pretty remarkable. <clears throat> Whether it's the bread, the salsa, or the tri-tip, or all three together. Tastes the same every time, too. Remarkably consistent. You know, anytime you have crab and you throw butter on it, and I, I uh, chop up some garlic and sprinkle that in there, and it has never not been a hit. Well, you gotta taste it, right? You gotta make sure it's okay. That'll work. Thanks for joining us. Go, Go Pokes. Pokes.